Okay, so obviously when the sun is clearly out, um, the clouds have disappeared, you get this lovely definition. And I'm just showing you this a little bit because you get this like a lattice work of shadow and patches of light on the lane formed by the uh, the branches of the tree behind me. There's an elder, an old elder tree behind me. Um, so there's not many leaves on it yet. So it's a lovely kind of, almost like it's a, a rose window that's appeared. Oh, sorry about the dog. There's something, there's something invisible and not actually there that he's barking at. It's like a, a dog's existential moment. Uh, anyway, so again, that's the lane we're going to do. And you can see the, the, the lovely change between the flowers of the, the umbels, the passes where the light is full on them. And then when they're in the shadow, they get almost like a greeny gray on them. Um, so that's quite an interesting thing to change. So you can pick the flowers out. Let me see if I can just zoom in with the accompaniment of Cairn Gorm Terrier in the background. So you can see the, 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 the stark difference actually. And it's quite a nice painting device with the light on the flowers and how they disappear into the shadow of the See now the, the softening of the shadows again because the sun's gone behind the cloud. Who'd be a who'd be a film maker? Okay, there we are. Hi. Uh, okay, we're going to do a painting. This is uh, the lane up the road from where we live, about two hundred yards up the road, in uh, Coppet Hall near Wisons Bridge, near Saundersfoot, near Tanby, near well. Not near anyway, already in a lovely way. My name is Guy, and uh, I have no idea if any of this is going to work. It's the first time I've done a video, and uh, have you ever seen an old man trying to work out a phone with thumbs that seem to be borrowed from somebody else? You get the idea. So, anyway, this is uh, we're in the back garden, and uh, I'm going to show you how to do, or my way, let's emphasize that, my way of uh, starting a painting. So what we've got basically is a, a 6 inch by 6 inch, 15 by 15 centimeter square canvas. Uh, it's been primed two or three times using a chalk based gesso, standard really. Um, and then this is a uh, an earth pigment of mine that I make from... A nearby field and uh, suspended it with gesso again hence that kind of terracotta tint because of the white in it and it kind of warms up the canvas what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in all of these sort of areas here first just to block in the body color to kind of push all of that darkness back to create a kind of sense of distance and it's crudely done with a just a, a splodging technique as I like to call it and basically we're going to just map in the main starting point so look you can see here we've got a kind of a darkness where the lane disappears on the corner so let's just put that in roughly like this uh, nice day today mind we're going to get rained on at some stage or the dog's going to come out barking or the ravens are going to fly over and start barking at something a lot of raven activity at the moment, thrushes don't seem to like them very much, but you know the nests. Okay, so basically you can see what I'm doing. I'm just blocking in a kind of a rough start. So here we are. Here we go. Very crude. Uh, I tend to sort of call this the the ugly stage of painting, really. Now, if you're a watercolor artist, you better have a tablet before you start doing this, really. Just oh, block it in there like so. And we're just having a look first. How does it all, what goes where? So we've got this little bit about here. Um, I'm going to now bring this back down behind all of this here. I'm going to kind of darken that a little bit. And don't forget the way we're going to paint this. And the lane then comes through sort of roughly, I don't know, about here. Sort of just in there a bit. I quite like to put the contours in early so it gives me an idea of what happens and then it's narrow there possibly a little kind of a kick 
and then out we come on this nice sort of asymmetrical cornering of that and I just kind of again quite roughly block in this here uh, just sort of hint at a couple of grasses there so on and so forth I'm just sketching in paint all right and it really liberates you doing this by the way uh, a really good way of doing this if you um, have the fear before you paint is to uh, get yourself a cardboard box and paint on that if you can see that brilliantly executed maneuver with a the brush there uh, and what that will do is it'll take all the fear out of your painting because you can cut up as many cardboard boxes as you want and you can go to the shed and get some uh, get some dark paint industrial quality will do and all I'm going to do is just sort of put in there's a bit of a curve now we're not going to get this bang on yet which is my way of excusing myself for slightly dodgy curve there I'm just going to pop in a little line there that's nice and then come on the corner a bit and I'm going to kind of put in a few of these little shadows there's a bump I always like lanes with a little bump in the middle where the grass can grow and uh, and that's kind of where we start off the painting so we can see where everything lives okay Okay, um, we're going to basically carry on putting this uh, this bank in here. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Should we? Oh, are we still filming? There? Oh, I think we might have got away with that. Okay. Um, so I'm just using this deep. Green here, which I used before, just to kind of block this in here, so it flattens out a little bit, comes off the lane a bit flatter there. Uh, let's come up here, and I'm going to just push that back a fraction with a little bit of the extra purple in there. Purple's a great colour with green. It's they kind of They kind of help each other out a bit. Some of my students say that I always say, if you're in doubt, use purple. I like to think I'm more subtle than that, but they're probably right. There are people with far more, far better advice in their repertoire, I think. Right, okay, so look, I'm just gonna put that in there like that. Now you notice again, Please, I emphasize this is the ugly stage of painting, all right? I'm gonna just put that in so we've got a kind of a denseness. Uh, we need to darken that. Can you see here, we've got a, this dark area, so we need to push that back, push that back so this area here comes, comes forward, okay? So I'm gonna do that now. Be careful when you're going in with um, oil paint, uh, black oil paint, ivory black, or this is ivory black, but lamp black. If I were you, I'd have a brush. Can you see this incredibly expensive, beautifully maintained paintbrush here? Um, this is my brush that I tend to use for black. I've got a couple, and I just put them aside and don't use them for anything else. So they sort of, they maintain their truth. That's rubbish. What they do, though, is they don't complicate uh, compromise, I think is the word I'm trying to, let's sort of compromise your other paint. So look, I'm just bl blocking in pretty crudely again, a little bit of black here, coming up here to kind of, and I'm using a minute smidge of spirit just to loosen the paint so it's not too jam light and I'm just going to kind of put that back now it seems better here when the sun goes see you know it's clearer so I'm just scruffing and scuffing that in kind of being a little bit aware of a couple of trees here that need picking out 
just maybe that would come to about there just ish I like that one there kind of just vaguely gonna put them in I'm still using my brush here that my black brush and don't be too precise don't try and make it all neat and tidy that's got ivy on it I suspect it's, I think a lot of beech trees here and there's a lot of ivy clambering up and probably annoying them uh, just again because there's all kind of things happening here blocking getting in the way so I'm almost gonna you know connect everything together a little bit and just here just put a tiny amount in just to create another layer in there as well uh, there's a darkness coming up there but then there's a little bit of light in there so I need to put that on top okay so you get I hope you get the kind of the gist of what's what's going on here again tiny tiny amount now some people say you know you must you like the impressionist guy you're a bit like them well I don't think they quite say that they say you must like the impressionist because you dab and splodge quite a bit and some impressionist scholars would say Christ man you've got no idea what you're talking about but they the impressionists a lot of them were very down on using black 